In today's video, I'll demonstrate making and using wheat flour paste. I'm getting straight into it, so I better describe what's going on and talk about why I've made this video later. Making wheat flour paste is essentially the same as making starch paste. The starch in the flour provides the adhesive properties in the resulting paste. So it's a matter of mixing flour with water and cooking it. To control the cooking process, I'm using a double boiler. I'm using the ratio recommended in Kathy Abbott's book, one heaped teaspoon to 250 millilitres of water. I'll stir constantly, first to blend the flour into the water, and then to stop lumps forming until the mixture thickens. Once it has thickened, I'll turn the temperature way down and cook it for 20 minutes, stirring every few minutes. In this time, I'll get a jar ready by sterilizing it with hot water. If you don't have a fancy double boiler, you can just use a metal bowl that fits in a pot. You could cook directly over a hot plate, but you will need to be very careful and probably should stir for the entire 20 minutes. Or you can use one of the other cooking methods, such as the microwave, or my favourite, the Thermomix. In older books, the recipe usually includes alum, which I believe was used as a preservative, which is then often supplemented with chemicals such as formaldehyde. I like to add a couple of drops of oil of cloves as a preservative. I add this just as the mixture has thickened. I'll include a couple of the recipes from books in the description. Once the mixture has cooked for 20 minutes, I'll let it cool some and then transfer it to a jar for storage in the fridge. Before I use it, I will strain it and give it a good mix. Kathy Abbott suggests sieving it through a nylon while it's warm. I figure I'll do this just before I use it anyway. After I've sterilized the jar with hot water, I usually give it a light misting with isopropyl alcohol for good measure. I think this level of sanitizing is why my paste usually lasts at least two weeks. But as they say, once it starts to smell fruity, stop using it. Most sources say it will last one week. So why am I making this video? I've said in the past the only paste a bookbinder needs is refined starch paste or methyl cellulose. The thing with making these videos is that the more of them I make, the more research I put into them. Initially, everything was based on what I was taught and repeated. I am aware there is a lot of variation in bookbinding, and I've said this diversity is one of the great and interesting things about the craft. This is why I don't like the description, this is the correct way to do something. There is usually another way. Maybe I didn't expect to find so many variations that I think are better than what I've done to date. A good example is scraping the paste off leather between applications, or the pasting out of boards as well as the spine before covering. When I find differences, I explore them a bit, do some experiments, and if I decide there is something in it, I've decided to adopt these methods. I don't think it means that what I did in the past is wrong, and maybe the new method isn't even better. But all things being equal, this is now my new standard approach. For a while, I've been recommending Kathy Abbott's book, Bookbinding, a step-by-step -step guide, as the best book in print, and the one someone new to bookbinding should buy. Maybe I should have read it more carefully, because while researching wheat flour paste, I came across this in Kathy's book. You should use wheat flour paste for bookbinding and wheat starch paste for paper repair. Wheat starch paste does not contain enough gluten to create a strong adhesion and so should not be used for bookbinding jobs. Wheat flour paste must never be used when repairing paper as it will eventually stain the paper a brownish yellow, whereas wheat starch paste dries completely clear. Since Kathy Abbott says it's the gluten that helps make the paste strong, this helps us decide what is the best flour to use for the paste. 
I've been using all-purpose flour and that seems to work well. I'd probably avoid cake flour which has a low gluten content. If you have access to bread flour which has a higher gluten content then I'm sure that would work even better. But avoid wholemeal flour and self-raising flour. I was aware of a number of bookbinders I hold in high regard who use wheat flour paste, but I've never been in a position to ask them why they use it. All the older manuals that I like, such as Johnson, use wheat flour paste, and I put this down to a lack of availability of refined starch at the time. This was the first time I'd heard a reason for using flour paste over starch paste. I'll demonstrate pasting both paper and leather, and off camera I'll add a strip of book cloth to this board as well. After it's dried, you'll see how strong the bond is between the paper and the board, as I'll try and rip it off and the paper delaminates rather than separate from the board. You'll also notice that the paper pulls the board in significantly. And that's not because flour paste has special pulling properties over starch paste. The pull is related to the stretch of the paper. And since both pastes are very wet, the paper will stretch about the same with both. Thus the resulting pull will be about the same with both pastes. I'll finish this demonstration by pasting out some leather. I'll do the usual thing of wetting the hair side or the grain side of the leather, then putting a coat of paste on the flesh side, and then I'll fold the leather over and leave it sit for a few minutes, maybe five minutes, to let the paste soak into the leather. Then I'll open the leather up and scrape off any residual surface paste remaining. Give the leather another coat of paste, fold it over and again let it sit for a few minutes. Open it up once more. Now there's likely to be more surface paste remaining. I'll scrape that off and give the leather one final paste before applying the board to it. Even though I've only used it for a few weeks, I'm pretty sure I'm swapping to wheat flour paste from now on for leather bindings. After all, it's hard to go against the advice of Kathy Abbott, BCM, James Brockman and Nick Collishaw. I'll still use starch paste for paper repair, as the issue of the yellowing with age of the gluten would be unacceptable. I'll still use methyl cellulose for mix. I guess we're all on a bookbinding journey but mine is just a bit more out there and in the public. Let's see if I'm still using wheat flour paste in a year's time. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you found it interesting. As always, I really appreciate it if you hit the big thumbs up button. If you're able to and would like to support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. I hope everyone's staying safe and until next time, cheerio.